My name's John Hayes. I'm one of the founding cardiologists of the Queensland Cardiovascular Group. I'm specifically a cardiac electrophysiologist. My area of expertise and interest is in cardiac rhythm management, devices and ablations to try and cure arrhythmias. I, I love cardiology. I had a couple of fantastic mentors early in my career. I looked up to them and I thought I wanted to emulate their expertise, their care of their patients. And back at that time, electrophysiology, the study of arrhythmias, was in its infancy. In fact, we couldn't cure anything back then. It was all a diagnostic procedure to try and understand what was happening in hearts. And I could see the future. I could see the technology could answer a lot of these problems and issues. And I've always been a techno junkie since uh, way back. And, and I think that that really reflects my interest in this area and my passion for it. The heart has four chambers. The top two are the atria, the bottom two are the ventricles. The normal pacemaker of the heart sits on the top chamber, the atrium, setting the atrium off. They're smaller priming chambers. They fill the blood into the ventricles, the big major pumps of the heart. Then there's a little delay allowing that filling to complete. Then the ventricles pump and eject the blood around the body. So the heart works in a nice rhythmical process of the atrium, little delay ventricle, atrium, ventricle. That happens 100,000 times every day. The heart does an amazing job. The atria, as in the ventricles, can also have extra beats. Any cell in the heart has the intrinsic or inherent ability to beat for itself. And as a result, sometimes other parts of the heart beat out of step with the natural pacemaker. If they were just a single beat or two, we would call them an ectopic or an extra beat of the heart and they can come from the atrium or the ventricle. But as we age, particularly related to aging, but also related to other cardiac issues or problems, the atria can have everywhere trying to beat chaotically at three to 400 beats per minute. It's very rapid and chaotic. And that chaos means that it doesn't mechanically pump well. Therefore, the blood can stagnate in it, it can potentially clot, and those clots can break off and float in the circulation to the kidney, the arms, the leg, the brain, and cause a clot or a stroke. And that's one of our major concerns with atrial fibrillation. It's a very common condition. In fact, by the time we all get to the age of 70 or 80 years of age, one in every eight to 10 people will have suffered atrial fibrillation at least once in their life. So it's going to be a common occurrence. Atrial fibrillation itself has a number of issues. It can be highly symptomatic to patients. They may feel palpitations, they may feel breathless, fatigued, tired, sometimes some chest tightness. And rarely it can lead to blackouts or syncope as we would call it. When it comes to the specifics of an atrial fibrillation ablation procedure, there are a number of options available. Our service provides all of these options, whether it ranges from a cryo balloon that is freezing parts of the atria to try and prevent the atrial fibrillation, or 3D electroanatomical mapping, a complex, almost GPS-like system to work within the hearts in a 3D dimension. And this allows us different technologies for different patients to get the best outcome. So over the course of my career, I've been fortunate to be able to be involved with cutting edge technologies, their deployment, their use in these areas of rhythm management, and partnering with hospitals have technology that nobody else has been able to acquire or afford. And that's exciting for me.